So up until now, we've just been looking at one categorical variable. Um, now we're actually going to look at the relationship between two categorical variables. Um, so this is a real study about the effect of having choices. Um, a researcher set up a tasting booth for jams in a grocery store. She alternated the choice set. Sometimes the booth would feature six different jams and sometimes 24. So sometimes people had um, more choices and sometimes it was a simpler choice set. Um, and we're looking here to see whether or not the customer stops. So depending on which choice set they saw, um, did they actually stop and uh, taste at the, at the booth? Okay, so our response variable there is whether or not they stopped. That's what we really care about as like a uh, person trying to sell these jams. And then the explanatory variable is what choice set they saw. Was it the small or the large choice set? Okay, so the question here says, is there any evidence of a relationship between the size of the choice set and whether the customer stopped? So we don't just want to compare the number who stopped because the sample sizes aren't the same. Um, so instead, we're going to calculate proportions. Okay, so um, we can think about this as calculating the row percentages. So we can look at the proportion who stopped when they saw the small choice set. Um, that would be 63 out of 157 customers. So that comes out to about 40%, 0.4013. And we would compare that to the proportion who stopped when they saw the large choice set. So 98 stopped out of 163 customers. And so that's about 60%, 0.6012. So it does seem like there is some um, effect here, right? Anytime these two are not equal, if you don't have the same proportion in each group, um, if they're not equal, then that means that there is an association in the sample. So of course it could be just by chance, um, but at least in the sample there is an association. So to see the same relationship in a graph, um, we can use something called a mosaic plot. And I actually really love these because they have a lot of information um, just for one image. Um, so one thing that we can look at, at the, with the mosaic plot is the width of the bars. So the width of the bars here, they look like they're the same because they're so close, but they actually aren't. Um, the width of the bars represent the sample sizes. So here, the large one is just ever so slightly wider than the small one um, because we had 157 for small and 163 for large. So the width is representing the sample size. The height is the proportions that we just calculate. So that was, height represents the proportion who stopped in each group. And we can see the colors are saying which ones stopped um, and which ones didn't. And then here it's not really such a big deal because the widths are similar. Um, but sometimes it's actually useful to look at the area of a certain color. So area represents the counts, right? The total number in each category. Okay, so now let me show you how to make those two-way tables and segmented bar graphs in Jump. So we're going to be using the Jam Choices data. So I'm going to do File Open. I have mine in a folder here, Jam Choices. So there's actually several different ways to do this. Um, I think the easiest is probably just to do Analyze Fit Y by X because it sets everything up for you. Remember, anytime you're talking about the relationship between two variables, Fit Y by X is a good choice. Okay, so we want to put the response variable here. So we're interested in whether the customer stopped. That's our response. The size of the choice set, that's our X. And if we look at how this data is set up, again, it's given in a table. So when it's given in a table like that, you've got to take your counts and put those in the frequency box. Okay. And I love this because it goes ahead and gives you the mosaic plot and it gives you a contingency table or two-way table. So it has some extra numbers here in the table that you don't need. If you want to hide those, like we're really only using right now um, the row percentages, 
then you can just uncheck those boxes and that's really nice. So row percentages, I would say, are the most common ones that we use, um, but you could also, if you were interested in, you know, out of everyone who stopped, how many of them saw the small and large choice set? So out of all the customers who stopped, we can see that most of them saw the large choice set. This is a little bit misleading because the sample sizes are different sizes. So that's why it's probably better to use the row totals instead of the column totals. And while we have this data set open, I might as well show you that this isn't really the end of the story, right? We don't just care about whether the customer stopped. Um, we also care about whether they ended up buying the jam. So did they redeem the coupon that they got at the stand? So let's go ahead and try that one too. So I'm going to do fit Y by X, but here I'm going to look at whether they redeemed the coupon as my response variable. Everything else is the same. Okay, so I've got three colors here um, because I have three categories. So this is yes, they redeemed the coupon, no, they didn't, and NA means they didn't stop. So they never had a coupon, um, they didn't have one to redeem. So we can see this actually kind of tells a different story, right? The small choice set, even though they were less likely to stop, they were actually more likely to make a purchase, right? So if what you really care about is did they end up buying the jam, maybe the small choice set is a better um, idea after all because we can compare they're much more likely to buy if they're in the small group than in the large choice set group. So something to keep in mind. One more thing I'll show you just while I'm at it, um, especially because I know a lot of you are familiar with um, pivot tables, Analyze Tabulate is more flexible than Fit Y by X. Um, so again, you wanna put your counts in the frequency box, um, but let's say that you wanna sort of look at whether they stopped and then break that down by choice set. So right now we've just got a two-way table, um, but maybe we wanna break it down sort of further from there we can sort of do like um, subsets within um, and do things like that. So um, that can be useful. You can play around with that. Um, but I would say for what we're going to do in this class, analyze fit Y by X will be fine.